Hey, what's up YouTube? I hope you're well. Quick video today to talk about a cool technique to convert a 3D location into a grid unit index. What the hell am I talking about? Well, let's see a simple example. Here I have a 3D grid comprised of a number of cells in X, Y and Z. And here I have a simple actor that I can move around and any cell it's in turns green. Okay, it's nothing too fancy, I agree. Yet, it's quite an interesting technique. You see, this grid is actually just a simple one-dimensional boolean array. It's literally just a bunch of booleans in memory one after the other. Yet somehow it depicts a grid in 3D space and I seem to have a way to translate that actor's 3D position into a one-dimensional array index. And the cool thing about it is that it works with a one-dimensional grid, a two-dimensional grid, three and so on. Also, if you're familiar with Niagara's 3D grid interface, well, it's actually the same exact technique this grid interface uses to translate or convert, I may say, a particular world position into a grid cell index. That way, once you have that grid cell index, well, you can fetch that cell's data, maybe it has a list of all particles contained in that cell, and so you can then in turn fetch those particles' data, maybe check where they are in 3D space, and build a logic to have a particle avoid nearby particles, right? That kind of technique could also be used to, say, voxelize a 3D space. Let's say you want to know if a player has fully explored an area in 3D. Well, split that area's volume into a 3D grid, and then you can keep track of quote-unquote voxels that player has been in. And because that 3D grid in the end is just a one single array, cells are contiguous in memory, right? One after the other. And CPU do like contiguous block of data. Very cache friendly. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, before diving into blueprints, let's go over the theory real quick. The first important thing to keep in mind is to be consistent with the way of indexing grid cells. You have to go with the same quote-unquote strategy when converting an index to a world position and converting a world position to an index. It might not make sense right now, but it will in a minute. So let's assume this is my world origin, 0, 0, 0. Again, I'm going to work with a one-dimensional grid to start with, so I don't care about the Y and Z components for now. The first thing to do is to come up with a grid cell size. Usually, you have some kind of volume or size and an amount of cells you want to work with, and so a simple divide gives you the grid cell size. Let's assume I want to divide a quote-unquote length of 1000 cm into 10 cells. A cell would then have a size of 100 cm. And assuming I start with a cell index 0 at 0 in world space, so at the world origin, that would give me a cell index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, right? Okay, here's the player's bone. It has a 3D location, but for now, again, I only care about its X component for that first example. Now, I want to keep track of cells this player has visited. And with a one-dimensional grid, it's actually quite simple. Take that bone's X location, Divide by the grid cell size, 100 cm, and round to the lowest integer, and that's it. If that pawn is at, say, 90 cm in X, well, 90 divided by 100, 0.9, rounded to the lowest integer, 0, and it's indeed in the cell index 0. Then 1, 2, and so on. Now, if it goes too far, it exceeds this grid length, and it results in an invalid index. Similarly, if it goes that way, that results in negative indexes, which are invalid either. So usually, you first have to ensure that position you want to convert to an index is within the grid bounds. That ensures you end up with valid grid cells indexes, okay? Cool, that's a one-dimensional grid. Let's switch gear and move on to a two-dimensional grid. Now I want to keep track of that pawn's X and Y components and figure out in which cell it's in, but that grid is now, well, two-dimensional. Yet, I still have a single one-dimensional array of grid cell indexes, right? So that's index 0 to 9, 10 to 19, and so on. And really, when you think about it, it's almost like entire new rows were added to this one-dimensional array. And so it's like for each row, that array grows by the amount of entries per row. And that's exactly how I'm going to proceed to convert that 2D position to a single unit index. Now, the way I handle that X index is not going to change at all. However, I'm going to take that pawn's Y location now, and same thing, divide by the grid cell size in Y, and round to the lowest integer. That gives me two separate indexes, one for the X axis and one for the Y axis. 
So how to quote unquote merge those two indexes to get a single cell index in that one dimensional array? Well, for each index in the y-axis, multiply by the amount of cells in x and add it to the index in x. So here, that's index 10 because I'm at index 0 in x and index 1 in y. And because that grid has 10 cells in x, having moved by one index in y in that grid means have quote unquote moved in that one dimensional array by 10 entries. And so that's index 11, 12, 13 and so on, because that y index is still 1, but that x index increases one by one still. So that pawn's 2D location is indeed correctly converted into a single grid cell index. Great, let's move on to the third dimension then. Alright, you'd guess having a third dimension drastically complicates things, but actually not at all. Having a third dimension really simply means this z-index increases that one dimensional array by the amount of grid cells in x multiplied by the amount of grid cells in y. That's how many cells there are per stack, right? So 100 grid cells at level 0, 200 at level 1, 300, and so on. And so same ID takes this pawn z location, divide by the grid cell size in z, and round to the lowest integer then multiply by the amount of cells in x and y, and add it to the previous results. And voila, that 3D position is converted into a single grid index. Implementation is really straightforward and can be pretty much summarized in this simple function. It takes a world position and applies the quote-unquote rules I just explained to convert that position into a grid unit index. Then it's just a matter of creating an array big enough to contain all cells and then get that grid unit index to update it. Here I just chose to turn on that boolean, boolean that is used to draw debug grid cells in different colors. Now, there's an elephant in the room. That's only working because so far I've assumed the grid origin is at the world origin. But it might not be. In fact, it might even be rotated or scaled, who knows. So the trick is to actually treat this grid origin as a world origin, even if it's not. Meaning if that grid is offset by some amount from the world origin, well, subtract that offset from the position I want to convert to a grid unit index. Same if it's rotated. Rotate that position by the inverse of that grid's rotation. And same with scale. That essentially transforms that position from world space to this grid's local space, and then you check if the transform position is within the grid bounds, and only then it's safe to apply this conversion. Now you may also want to go the other way around, say figure out a grid cell's 3D position based on a given index. Let's say index 234. Well, first divide that grid unit index by the amount of cells in X and take the remainder. That's the modulo function, right? And that's the index in X. Next, repeat that step, but this time using the amount of grid cells in X and Y, and then divide by the amount of cells in X, and that's the index in Y. A bit confusing, I know. Last, divide that grid unit index by the amount of cells in X, multiplied by the amount of cells in Y, and that's the index in Z. Once you have that, it's just a matter of multiplying that integer vector by the grid cell size in X, Y, and Z, and you get the grid cell's 3D position in local space. Then apply that grid's local to world transform, and you end up with this grid's 3D position in world space. And that's pretty much it. Once again, it's a bit of a niche technique, but it can be very, very useful to create all kinds of grid-based systems. Voila, I hope you liked the video. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you did. Files are available as a tier 1 reward on my Patreon. Any support is much, much appreciated. Speaking of which, thanks to all my patrons for their amazing support. Thanks so much. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye bye!